Hi, this is Shadi and today we will go through and examine the jujitsu roots of today's judo chokes. Now, um, the Kudokan has made it very clear and very precise and systemized uh, when it comes to putting out the techniques and this is how we will examine everything. So, what we will do today is uh, go through what is called the Katame no Kata, which is a Kata for everything that has to do with ground grappling, um, pins, joint locks, and of course chokes. And we will go through choke by choke and examine them and see also the basic form, which is also found in the uh, Jiu Jitsu Kata. So luckily the Tenshin Shinyu Ryu uh, lineage is still very much alive and it is under the headmaster Nobuhiro. So this is what we will do. Um, we will go through the both katas of judo and Tenshin Shinyu Ryu Jiu Jitsu and see how they evolved and also go through the variations of these chokes uh, in competition because what the Kodokan actually did or Kano Shihan actually did was name them according to a principle and if the name has the principle if you translate it correctly and this is how you understand which choke it is and how it evolved so a lot of the time people will uh, evolve a choke add a little bit of details to it but they will still fall under the same principle and this is what we will do like i said um, first we go through the judo kata see the basic form and then see a little bit of more of variations and then see it in the jujitsu kata and see how it was or how the context of it was so let's start first with the kata juji jime uh, which is like a mixed grip cross choke it is the first choke or strangle performed in the um, katame no kata so here we see it from the mount position it is one of the easiest ways to obtain this uh, shimewaza and here we see it um, like i said the first one in the kata or the series of shimewaza within the kata so let's see uh, a few variations of it and see it in jujitsu so here let's see this from the back you are actually sliding the collar from the back and here trapping it and scissoring with your arms all from the back what when you catch your opponent's back or ushiro getame pay close attention to this variation because this is very crucial when seeing it in the old days so here let's see the uh, multiple variations you have nami shushi jime which is both of the palms are down and you hear you basically you are still performing the same uh, mechanics uh, scissoring the head with the lapels and um, strangling by applying pressure on the carotid arteries and restricting blood flow and get the tap here we see you have gyaku juji jime which is both palms are up and finally the uh, first form which is the kata juji jime which is like a mixed grip um, palm up and palm down and here you proceed to choke very similar uh, the setups might differ uh, here let's see it from open guard here you see you close in which uh, close in and then get it from the back not making it very obvious so let's see it in uh, Tenshin Shin Ryu Jiu Jitsu this is the very first uh, technique performed from the back like I mentioned before so pay uh, like I said pay close attention here we see it and then proceeds to get the tap from uh, like a kneeling position not necessarily um, like grappling this is like I said the very basic form like shown in the kata here you see he performs an escape by liberating his collar and getting back up now let's get to the second choke which is a very intriguing choke and very versatile as well um, which is actually the hadaka jime or the naked choke so naked choke meaning there's no need or use of the gi or the collar in order to perform the choke so anything using your clasping of the hands will be considered um, hadaka jime or also with the legs uh, arm and legs um, there are multiple variations so here we see this is the basic form uh, let's see it again with Kodokan footage. You're clasping the hand here particularly you are pulling your wrist towards you thus choking with by crushing the trachea. So this is one form of Hadaka Jime uh, 
here let's see it again so you, you have what is called trachea chokes where you're crushing the trachea and also you have blood choke here we see for example clasping the bicep and passing it around the head um, this is a blood choke you know suppressing the carotid arteries from delivering blood to the head here we see also the more uh, dynamic version and also um, choking the trachea here we see um, from like someone turtling getting the tap let's see from another angle here let's see uh, this is from uh, an old tension shinryu ryu jujitsu scroll from the 1820s i believe you see it uh, the basic form which is found in the katame no kata so here we are seeing the preservation of it through judo as well so uh, kano sensei was a student of tension shinryu let's see it now here in competition in 2019 so this is a recent here we see the basic form performed in competition from the back mount here we see uh, this is uh, i believe yarden meyerson uh, clasping her hands no, not grabbing the gi as you see here her hands and then pressing down with her leg preventing her from getting back up this is what we call a necktie but it is still a hadaka jime because it's a naked choke moving on to arguably the most versatile choke what is which is called the okuri erijime or sliding collar strangle um it's my favorite choke personally let's see it um in a very basic form in tenshin shinryu jujitsu this is the same kata performed you drop down as you slide the collar um around the neck and then continue to pull it towards you and then get the tap you can also get it like a mix of a submission as we will see later in another uh, jujitsu kata here you see it um, as a repeat in slow motion you drop down so it's coming from a stand-up uh, position hence there was no newaza like uh, today because uh, this is not of a sports uh, jujitsu but rather uh, a self-defense oriented like the old days here you see like a haragatame with okuri erijime so let's examine the kodokan uh, forms of okuri erijime because it did indeed evolve quite a lot with the evolution of Neiwaza with the Kodoka. So here we see the basic form. Uh, you uh, push one collar down and the other you slide it across uh, the neck, thus strangling the opponent and hence the name uh, sliding collar strangle. So here you see uh, it was I believe Kano Sensei's favorite choke. Here you see the mechanics of the, how you should do it. One you slide it across the neck and one you push it down in order to create the maximum pressure possible. Here we see taken from the back in a more dynamic form in randori being done in Neiwaza. So here, uh, this is what we call the clock choke, uh, very famous uh, variation being done in uh, competition in judo and in uh, jujitsu. This is what we call today uh, a, cl um, a loop choke, uh, still also sliding. This is what we call an unofficial name of it is Jikoku Jime, which is hell strangle. You are actually pinning or crucifying with the leg and the, uh, the leg and the arm like a crucifix and here you see using the leg in order to prevent uh, uke from turning towards you and nullifying the choke coming from jikoku as well here you are strangling if they turn towards you they nullify the choke but if you actually press down this is like a, what you call like an inverted quote unquote kanto choke there is an unofficial name for it hasami jime or scissor choke let's see more um evolved variations in randori here we see krista the gucci like putting the leg underneath the head preventing the turn away from let's see it again and also hooking the leg with her own arm this is what we call a bow and arrow choke uh, let's see another form like the basic form of bow and arrow what we call bow and arrow all considered okuri erijime here it's also krista de gucci one of the best at this choke let's see here here you see like a, like a inverted quote-unquote kanto choke as well all considered okuri erijime sliding the collar across the neck in order to choke the next one in the kata is the kata ha jime or the single wing choke it might look like an okuri erijime but you are actually performing a little bit of different mechanics let's see uh, a little bit more in details
So here you see kata ha jime. Uh, you, you single out one limb. You uh, isolate it. You grab the collar deep, and then you go underneath the arm, isolating it. Thus, the form like single wing, and then you proceed to choke by actually pushing. Um, your forearm against the back of the neck of Uke and you have the arm well firm in the front and thus uh, choking them. This, this can be like a, a trachea choke easily when you are pushing because you are not sliding the collar and reducing blood flow to the head. You are actually um, pushing the forearm to the front and here uh, with your hand the other on the other side helping it. So here let's see it uh, standing in an old jujutsu kata detention shinryu very similar. Here you see isolating and pushing the forearm to the head and choking. Let's see it again standing because you know these uh, old koryus were mostly for self-defense not so much for randori or sports like judo or bjj or sambo. So here let's see finally tsukomi jime which is like a like a shoving choke uh, you are grabbing the gi and actually like really pushing with like a fist on the on the neck um, this is more of a trachea choke uh, rather than reducing blood flow it does reduce but more when you are like punching down uh, with your fist it does tend to um, how do you say damage the trachea it can easily do that um, there is also a very rare variation which is also called the um, necktie. Uh, we'll see it here in a second. Um, let's see here. You close down the both of lapels and slide like a, like a collar tie. And then get the choke by punching down on the trachea. So let's see here. Uh, a very traditional with the tra uh, attack or technique with the with the traditional weapons here you see he grabs the lapel and punches down and finishes the technique and immobilizes uke so this is mainly it we see how they have tremendously evolved uh particularly hadaka jime and also uh, okuri eri jime because the name sliding collar strangle it's it seems so like simple but Everything you can do around it, putting your legs, grabbing the wrist and turning around, uh, hooking the leg uh, and then, you know, hooking the the other arm with your other leg. Uh, there's just so much that you can do, particularly with Okuri Erijime. Kanto choke, you put your leg up in order to prevent them from turning towards you or getting back up and nullifying um, the collar sliding that's uh, strangling Uke. So, uh, there's just so much uh, that can be put underneath these umbrellas. Uh, I know Mikunsuke Kaweshi tried to go more in details with the naming like Hasami Jime rather than Kanto Choke Ushiro Jime uh, to differentiate it from Hadaka Jime Ushiro Jime which is the basic form that's uh, uh, performed in the Katame no Kata but Ushiro Jime tends to confuse people because Ushiro means back so a lot of the strangles are actually done from the back so it is not such a i would say logical way of naming it uh, hadaka jime naked choke is far more convenient uh putting your leg up you clasping your hands is also hadaka jime which is the what we call the necktie but if you are using the gi and then putting your legs up um like a jerby choke anything it's still can it would be uh, changed under the umbrella of actually okuri erijime so it is indeed fascinating to see them in a very primal and basic form in all jujitsu and how they evolved through judo so if you have anything else to add let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only and also check out josh simon's shop for historical t-shirts and historical articles this was Shady, and thank you for listening.